Yeah. So the concept of thermoregulation. So there's like a, there's a sort of a balance. So if you've seen any other of my videos, you'll know that I love making a balance between things. So there's a normal body temperature, which is what we talked about, 36.5 degrees centigrade to 37.5 degrees centigrade. There are heat loss mechanisms that function to decrease the heat of your body. And then there are heat gain mechanisms. And this whole balance is known as your homeostasis because you're supposed to maintain a body temperature enzymes your body mechanisms work at particular temperature and if you increase the temperature or decrease those temperatures things will not work yes so let's look at thermoregulation in a bit more detail so the normal body temperature as we said is from 37 point uh, 36.5 degrees centigrade to 37.5 degrees centigrade temperature is greater than that classify into hyperthermia this temperature is detected by your central and peripheral thermoreceptor. Central means present in your brain, peripheral means present in the rest of your body. So central and peripheral thermoreceptors detect this temperature. If the temperature is getting high, that means something is up. That, that, that's basically your brain saying, bro, you need to cool down. That's basically your brain saying to your body. So you have the activation of heat loss mechanisms. That sounds cool, but what are these heat loss mechanisms? Peripheral vasodilation. What is peripheral vasodilation? As I said, central means your brain. Peripheral means anything other your brain, which means your arms, your legs, and the rest of your body, basically most of it. So peripheral vasodilation, the blood vessels in your skin, your arms, and your legs, they vasodilate to increase the blood flow to your skin. What does that do? It causes heat loss. That's why when someone exercises and come back, they're all they're all red and they, they, their body is hot. That means that's that's your basically your body trying to lose the excess heat. How it does that is through peripheral vasodilation. Then you have splanchnic vasoconstriction. That sounds like a very, very difficult word. Let's break it out. Splanchnic means anything relating to your internal organs or viscera internal organs especially those of the gut so what exam for example you you just come come back from the exercise you're just you're just exercising and your body is rising in temperature but your your gut is having a very nice state it's like okay let's digest the burger that he had but hypothalamus goes like bro you can't be digesting burgers right now this guy has his temperatures rising. You can't be digesting burgers and fries right now. I'm taking the blood from you and I'm giving it to the skin. So that's exactly what happens. Splanchnic means organs and the viscera. And the blood vessels present in these organs, they vasoconstrict. So burger digestion will happen later. Right now, you need to lose heat. And for that, it gives all of that blood to your skin. And through your skin, you lose that heat. You lose that temperature. Diaphoresis. What is diaphoresis? Diaphoresis means loss of temperature from your body through sweating or through water. Excessive sweating is diaphoresis. This is exactly when you're feeling hot, you say, I'm going to take a shower. So this is your body's natural way of taking a shower. Diaphoresis. What if the central and the peripheral thermoreceptors detect a low temperature? This causes the activation of heat gain mechanisms. Again, this sounds very cool. How does your body gain heat? How does it know when to gain heat? It knows when to gain heat by those central and peripheral thermoreceptors. They're, they're detecting that body temperature is getting low. You need to gain heat. What are we going to do? We're going to do exactly the opposite or somehow similarly the opposite of what we did. We do peripheral vasoconstriction. So increase blood flow to your skin what it does is it causes the heat loss. So you want to preserve that heat loss. You decrease the blood flow to your peripheral stuff like your hands and your feet. You, that's exactly why when you go out in the cold, your hands and feet, they get very cold really fast. This is exactly what happens. You decrease that blood flow to, to limit that heat loss through the skin. Shivering. How does shivering help increase movement, increase muscle contraction? When you're standing out in the cold and you're going like, you're basically contracting your muscles. You're causing, you're causing your body to do work, to, to use ATP. And whenever you do work, you use ATP, you generate heat. 
This, this is exactly why you do this. You generate friction, you use ATP, you convert one form of energy, which is chemical energy in, in the sort of ATP into thermal energy or heat. This is exactly what your body does on its own. You start shivering, you have excessive muscle contraction, excessive muscle contraction uses ATP and thermal energy is generated. This is the concept of shivering and exactly muscle contraction. All of the heat loss mechanisms, they decrease temperature. All of the heat gain mechanisms, they increase temperature. Muscle contraction, as I pointed th this out in this slide, is exactly what goes wrong with malignant hyperthermia. You have excessive muscle contraction. You have excess use of ATP in these muscles. You have excess generation of heat. It's that easy. It's just the excessive employment of the heat gain mechanisms that causes that malignant hyperthermia.